I read or try and read scripture every night. Way back when Emery Cartret was the pastor here, and on the in the bulletin he would print uh, daily scripture readings for a week, and that got to be kind of a sort of something of a habit, although not dedicated. But I I did it. Finally, at one point, I asked him, I said, "Where do you get all these scriptures, uh, the recommendations?" and and he pointed out this little booklet called uh, A Year with the Bible. I went to Cokesbury and I got a couple of those. And at the time, I was traveling a lot. At that time, I was an airline pilot. I was traveling. And so, and so I put one in my uh, suitcase. Most of all hotels have a, some sort of a Bible in, that you can refer to. Well, I'd take out my little Year with the Bible, and there I'd go. And I would do that normally at the end of the evening. Just I'd climb in bed, grab the Bible, and take my little year with the Bible out, and I would read it. And so to me, that just became such an ingrained thing of what I did. The, the, the bigger problem was near the end of the year, right around November is when these, pan, these booklets came out. And if you didn't get there right on the right time, you know, Cokesbury would be sold out, and they weren't going to order any more ones. I'd have to go back and do the whole thing all over again with, with last year's, you know, you know, scripture reading. And so I, I did that for my career here in Atlanta when I was a, as a pilot. And I always felt that um, the, the activity of daily re-acquainting uh, myself with biblical scripture was a, was a worthwhile habit. What I found is, in terms of relating to the scripture, is that passage from 1 Kings chapter 19 where uh, Elijah is running away from Ahab or Jezebel and he's trying to find God. He's in a cave and there's a big storm. There's, God is not in the storm. He's not in the lightning. He's not in the earthquake. He's in a still small voice. And somehow or another that relates to me in the context of if you're trying to be aware of God's presence, Things need to be quiet so you can hear the still, small voice because there's so much noise, there's so much in the way of distraction that it becomes, to my mind, really, really important to find that place. Jesus says, go to your closet to pray. And I just think he means get away from all your distractions. Get away from some, some place that is quiet, that you can you know, exchange some communications with, with God. And that that's always been... Uh, something that I lean back on, that I, you know, this is the right way to go. That still small voice tells me I need to come to church pretty regularly. I need to sing in the choir. I need to do a video when you tell me that I need to do a video. There's, a, you know, there's something that goes on that says, yes, this is the right thing to do, the correct thing to do, and you're doing it the right, you're doing the right thing the right way. Anyway, that's uh, that's how I see it. It's fun to read. I, I always look forward to it and. Uh, Every once in a while, I look, I get through there and say, wow, this is really, really cool.